Hello guys, how are you? How have you been? On this part of the world, uh, I'm doing well and I thank God for everything. I thank him for provision. I thank him for protection and care which he has granted me. He has been <coughs> watching over me day and night and I have all reasons to recognize him. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you, my viewers, to my YouTube channel. For the new uh, viewers, I encourage all of you to subscribe. There is a red button down there. Just hit it and uh, give me that uh, subscription. It will be helpful for you to follow uh, what we do in this channel. Uh, for the season, 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 uh, uh, viewers there are some of the teachings which uh, we have been doing maybe you have skipped some of the uh, important lessons especially in this book of Nehemiah which we have been studying uh, so it is good uh, for us to get to, to listen or to to learn all the previous uh, studies so that we'll be able to connect anytime we come to continue from where we left so if you are new just Go where we started from chapter 1 then get to see the background of the book then through up to chapter 8 uh, where we finished uh, on last week I did promise that I will come again and continue from where we left so today we should start from chapter 9 so I welcome all of you once again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and my prayer is that as we continue learning from this book of Nehemiah, that we are going to be challenged, we are going uh, to be encouraged uh, to continue uh, believing God, to continue seeking Him, to continue reading His Word, and to continue yearning to do what is right as the Lord enables us. <coughs> so it's my pleasure uh, uh, to bring chapter 9 chapter 10 and maybe uh, chapter 11 uh, in today's uh, study so last time we finished by chapter 8 uh, where a scribe Ezra read the law of God uh, to the Israelites and I also discussed about the condition and the environment in which uh, he, he read this and what happened when he read the book, what we saw clearly is that the people of God, Israel, were deliberated, they were willing uh, to rebuild Israel, both uh, physical and spiritual. There was willingness which God worked in their hearts. That all of them uh, wanted uh, to come again and renew their covenant with God. I believe it is God who put this in their hearts that these people should be drawn again unto him. So today, uh, I'm going to start from mm -hmm. chapter 9. And in chapter 9, the topic is the Israelites confess, confess their sins. So the descendants of Abraham in chapter 9, they were led into a prayer of con confession or repentance by the Levites. And when you think about this prayer and when you read it, you are on, you will basically see the story of Israel from the call of Abraham all the way until the promised land. So in this chapter 9, you will see all the accounts, the position of God and the position of these people, Israel. At the end of it all, you are going to see a faithful God who has worked with these people from whence he got Abraham and then promised to give him descendants as many as the stars of the sky. So it is true God was faithful and he did bless Abraham through Sarah and through Isaac, Jacob. Then we have the nation of Israel and then the history of God and in his dealings, in his masses with these people, it truly shows how God was faithful. So in this prayer, these people recount of great things which God did for them. And they also uh, examine 
how honestly from with their hearts whether they have been able to remain faithful and it is clear when you read the, this prayer you'll see uh, people who have opened their hearts uh, to give god credit for his goodness for instance they recount how god uh, fought for them in the land of egypt releasing them through moses and then they recognize how god was merciful leading them through the wilderness during the daytime there was a cloud a pillar of cloud ahead of them and despite their stubbornness this cloud never departed god was with them and in mount sinai god even gives them the law to guide them the holy law so that they may uh, be with him and he not only gives them law he also comes down and to speak to them it, it shows that uh, god was truly faithful but these people israel they continued in their stiff necked uh, behaviors and in some places there are instances where uh, god did not spare them but also punished those who are sinful because it is said that the generation which became stumbling in the desert or in the wilderness they all fell in the desert and their bodies were buried in the wilderness but a few who are faithful they lent the descendants of israel to the promised land so in this prayer in chapter 9 eh, these people now eh, in jerusalem having been taken to exile and now Nehemiah from chapter 1 where it started has been, has been granted a favor by the king of Persia to come back and rebuild Jerusalem. Now he is working with Ezra. And here, after the Levites read this, uh, led uh, these people through this prayer, they all agreed that there was need for them to renew their covenant with God. Verse that it says in the view of all this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in a writing, and our leaders and levies and our priests are fixing their seals to it. So uh, after a deep examination of their work with God, they, their unfaithfulness was exposed, and they were zealous uh, to seek the will of God and His word. So they say, now they are going to enter into a writing in agreement which is written. And then their leaders and their, their, their people are going to affix their seal on this agreement. So that all of them in one accord would agree to serve the Lord. Now in chapter 10, it starts by giving the names of the people who put uh, their seal on that agreement and in chapter 10 there are also solid promises uh, which these people uh, had to renew with god in every aspect of negativity where they had failed in chapter 10 they mentioned those areas because uh, it is clear that they had neglected their position as the people of god they had stopped giving for instance God had commanded them uh, to give a shekel, to give different kinds of offering to the house of God, but they had already neglected. God, like it, told them not to intermarry with foreigners. So in chapter 10, they decree that they are going to, they will stop uh, from intermarrying with foreigners. And they are going to details in writing the things which they will do in renewing this covenant. And then um, we see uh, the willingness of these people. And now they say in the final, the last verse of chapter 10, that they will not neglect the house of their God. I, in chapter 10, I see uh, deliberate people who know uh, their situation and who understand where the problem is. Uh, what I get from here is that it is very difficult uh, for one to be restored back to God if there is no willingness of art and if they have not been exposed by the word of God. Uh, 
it is easy for someone to connect with God if they know their areas of weaknesses and seek God in those areas of weaknesses, those specific uh, areas uh, which they have not been able to live up to the word of God. At that point, like Israelites, it is possible uh, for them to know practical things which they need to do to identify their faith. So that's chapter 10. So chapter 11, it says the new residence of Jerusalem. Uh, if I was with you, yeah, I did describe how Jerusalem looked like in the beginning. Uh, when Nehemiah uh, came and observed the city, he found that the city uh, was large, but only a few people were living in it uh, because it was lying desolate. So in chapter 11, the walls have, has already been built, but some houses are still not restored. But the people in the city of Jerusalem are still few. Uh, Nehemiah uh, previously said that God had put uh, it in his heart that he should think about Jerusalem and about the inhabitants of these people. Jerusalem is one of instrumental uh, figure or symbol of Israel because when God calls Abraham, he promises him a land. And when uh, he promises a land, there is this city which is the center of worship. Of course, the temple of God was built in Jerusalem. And when the foreigners or kingdoms invaded Israel, it is Jerusalem that was destroyed. So anybody who would speak about restoration in Israel, when Jerusalem lies in ruins, that could not be called restoration. That's why in chapter 11, Nehemiah uh, is working out uh, his way to make sure that people have been, have been settled again in Jerusalem. Because people are living in villages and they sit in very few people. So we start by the leaders. The leaders, both from the, uh, the, the house of Benjamin, or what was called the kingdom of Judah. They, they agree that they, they will be the first people to come and settle in Jerusalem. And then in every family out of ten, they cast their lots. Uh, so that more people would come and settle in Jerusalem. And even some Israelites, they volunteered uh, that uh, they will come and settle in Jerusalem. And then the people were willing uh, to give all portions of their giving uh, so that the, the temple in Jerusalem uh, could be able to sustain uh, all the groups of people who are serving therein. Uh, and then in chapter 11, uh, we see the names of the people from every house, how they came from uh, descendants of Judah, from descendants of Benjamin, from the priests, from the Levites, from gatekeepers. All these people, uh, they came and settled in Jerusalem. Then the last chapter, uh, which I want us to speak about today, is chapter 12. Uh, where it talks about the priests and Levites. So here, there is a very important account here which I want to mention, and this is the dedication of the war. After it gives the account of the people, the lineage of the people and the ends and where they settled, which is very instrumental, uh, this chapter is full of names of the people. And these names, they really show that among the people who came back to, to Jerusalem, they were Israelites because they are found in the lineage from Abraham. We can trace them and their names are well given here is a clear account that God was faithful, that he preserved his people in the exile and he brought them back again and set on them in Jerusalem. So it was it was at this time where now the wars of Jerusalem were to be uh, dedicated. And when you read from verse 27 to the last verse, you will get uh, how 
the singing was done and the joy which was in Jerusalem. Nehemiah and Ezra lent people into dedicating the wall. And then the Bible says there was an extreme joy because these people, the, the, the building the wall of Jerusalem showed that their reproach has been taken away. When Nehemiah got the news about the, the, the ruins which are there in the walls of Jerusalem, he wept. And when you read his print chapter 1, you get to know what this meant, that these people have been alienated from God and they lie in open reproach for the surrounding communities. But now when the wall is built, then they are being restored to what which they had lost when they were taken to exile. So that's why there is a lot of rejoicing. There is a lot of singing. There are directors who rent processions of choir for thanksgiving, for praise, and for worship. And, and this setup, they say that it was done just like David had prescribed it in the, in the normal way. So I want us to finish at this point. And then we have started from chapter 9 to chapter 12. What are things which are standing out for you? I encourage uh, my listeners uh, to read uh, these chapters by yourselves and get, get to see how God is doing uh, with these people and get to relate what God is telling us in this generation. We know that uh, God's desire is that he is that he be in fellowship with his people. And now we are not talking about Israelites because our lineage can be traced in one man, Jesus Christ. Our lineage to the kingdom of God can be traced to Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, the sons of Abraham have been made from the stones. We, the Gentiles, who by right we do not deserve to be counted among the Israelites, the Jews. But the whole Christ who has broken the stumbling block so that there is no difference between a Jew and a Gentile. He has uh, put a connection for us so that we can be called the children of God. Then I think we need uh, to be joyful because through Christ our reproach has been taken away. He has given us a cloth. He has clothed us uh, with favor. And he has given us his word so that by it we may live. Have we reached a point where uh, we need to study the word of God, not just to increase our intellectual knowledge, but at least for, for instruction, for bringing us back to him and to his promises. So may the Lord uh, so much bless you. Next time I'll pick from there, then we shall see uh, how the book of Nehemiah ends. And I believe that God will keep on uh, teaching us and encouraging us to love him more. So may God bless you and do you good. Then finally, if you, are not, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you do so, so that you may get uh, these teachings wherever we release them. Soon we shall be starting a new series. Uh, I am open for your suggestions. You can send us an email, you can send us through the comments, you can speak to us through our Facebook, you can speak to us through our WhatsApp, and I know that uh, we shall be able uh, to read from the same page in all aspects. May God fight your battles. May you find favor with men and with God. May, may the Lord be your God. May he watch over you in whatever you go through. May God strongly come through for you so that no man who will stand against you will prosper. May the Lord fight your battles. In Jesus' name, amen.